I, I forget the name of it, but I'm in there and I see the videos and uh, the different stuff that you guys do. So I just thought it would be a perfect timing to have you guys on. And so I'm going to turn it over to you guys and uh, welcome Jen and Jess. And it's like, I'm excited to go sit down and uh, take some notes. All right. Well, thanks, awesome. Adam. We appreciate it. We are super excited to be here for sure. And Jen and I have worked very closely for the last several years, seven, eight years. And um, she used to be in our area, but now she's in Virginia. And like I said, you know, the way that we do production is a, a little bit differently because we are, well, I am in a smaller area and stuff, but that does not mean that, you know, we still do not sell a lot of houses, you know. Um, I'm still, you know, a top producing agent in my area. And um, what we want to talk about a little bit today is how we do things a little bit differently, because when it comes to social media, I think a lot of people focus on Instagram and stuff. But Jen and I both have really grown our businesses, um, you know, and I started 10 years ago and our area of expertise is really Facebook. And the reason why is because Facebook is much more a relationship builder where you can sit there and you can nurture people, people that you don't know, people that you do know. And it's not just forward facing stuff like a lot of the other social media platforms. Um, Jen, do you agree with that? Yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, it's like even for like past clients, a lot of the things, you know, people you know, don't stay in touch with their past clients. Well, if you have them on Facebook and in groups, you're able to engage with them and you're able to see kind of what they're doing, what's going on in their life. They're having kids, they're getting maybe, you know, I, we deal a lot with military, so they're getting PCS orders. You're the first one to hear about that. So you can like reach out to them to see what you can do to help them out. You know, again, I, a kid, I had one client, their, their son got some award for kindergarten and I sent him a little like thing in the mail and the mom was like, oh my gosh, he loved it, you know. Um, so it helps you stay really relational with those clients. Um, instead of just like trans transaction based, you're really, you know, getting to know them, getting to know their families, and you're able to reach out a lot more when you have them on Facebook and in those groups. And it starts right back to lead generating in the beginning. Um, and we've both really put a big, huge focus on Facebook groups. So the way that we had originally started using them was networking in a lot of the local groups of building the relationships, making friends, recommending resources. Um, we have transitioned over the years to have our own Facebook groups. Um, I have three that are real estate based for local stuff. Um, one is an all things New Bern Havelock. So that would be an all things of whatever your town, county, whatever you want to call that. Another one is homes for sale and rent in all of the counties that we service. And then my third one is an MVP group. Um, and then what happens is, is all of those groups serve a different purpose. Um, and I'm going to pop over and show you what those look like. And I also have Jen's as well, because her Facebook group is even different than, you know, the three that I have. So I want to pop over and show you what those look like. So this is my Newburn and Havelock group. And what this is, is it's kind of like an all-in-one. And as you can see, I have created this and linked it to my real estate business page. Um, and the really cool thing is, is this is something that takes very little time to do. But as you can see, I have um, seven people waiting to be approved into this group specifically. Um, and what happens in this group is it's just all about, you know, our town, our community. Um, we just post things that are happening, whatever's going on. Um, you can see in this one, um, we just post different things that we schedule out and we can talk about that too, but we schedule out like what kind of posts we're going to put in there for the week. And then this one is really cool. It's, you know, tell us what your favorite coffee shops are. So it's just getting people talking, getting people to interact. And then see, we have somebody that recommended one and then we can ask for vendors. Um, so it's, it's fun, but the way that we use this as a lead generation thing really comes down to how I use the member requests. So as you can see over here, we have all these people. I ask questions. And one of the questions that I ask is, are you interested in a realtor reaching out to you for your real estate needs? If they say yes, 
then I message them. I have a pre little thing that I copy from my Google Drive and share over to them. And also one of the questions is if they want to join our monthly newsletter, they give us their email address. Let's see, let's see this person did. So then I'm constantly building up my database every day. And so that's one Facebook group. Um, and then the homes for sale and rent, it's literally just what it says. We post all of our links in here and we use, you know, right from KV Core. So if anybody goes and looks at them, they're signing up and registering under my account. So then I just got all their lead information, right? So we do new construction. We break it down into counties. We do for rent, for sale, all kinds of stuff in here. And again, with the member requests, the same thing. We just ask, you know, a bunch of questions. You know, are you local? Do you want to have a real estate agent reach out to you? And the cool thing is, too, is like, this is a real estate agent. So she's, I'm not going to let her come in here. So it's your prerogative <laughs> if you want to have other real estate agents in your group or not. I do not allow them in my group because for me, it's my lead generation and nurturing platform. Um, so I want to show Jen's group because hers is a little bit different. Jen. Yeah. So I started, yeah. So, you know, whenever I PCS to, uh, Virginia, I knew that I had to like start my business all over from scratch. I didn't, you know, know the area. So I decided, decided that I was going to start Quantico VA 101 and it's 101 things to do while stationed in Quantico. Um, so again, and I started a book club with it. So again, I'm engaging with the spouses that are in this area. And what's great about it is, you know, we have at least, um, one event that we have a month. So whether it's, Hey, we're meeting for coffee, we're meeting for book club. We are meeting, you know, just, uh, we did the cherry blossom. Just if you click on the right, that cherry blossom meetup, the pink one. Yeah. Got it. So here's the cherry blossom meetup. So there was a lot of people who commented on this because they're like, oh my gosh, I want to go see the cherry blossoms in Washington, DC. You know, we ended up taking um, the VRE train up to Washington, DC, and I showed everybody how to navigate that. So that was a lot of fun there. So again, it's just to kind of get, and I also do not allow real estate agents to join my group. At first I was kind of letting them in and then I was like, Whoop, let's, let's kid them out. <laughs> let's kick them out. Um, but again, this is the way that I feel like, you know, with the military spouse community, I am able to engage and talk with them and get them to um, really come in. So we have like a coffee shop hop, again, the book club, all kinds of different things um, that we get to talk about. And a lot of spouses will come to this group that are moving to the Quantico area and just ask questions about the area. So I'm able to, again, help them out and get them engaged with the local area and then get them out of, you know, the house and get them to, you know, enjoy the area that we are living in. So it really kind of is a, a way for me just to meet other military spouses and get together. And then, you know, then everybody always brings up, what do you do, Jen? <laughs> and so it's like, hey, I wa I, I'm a real estate agent. If you ever need help, let me know. Mm -hmm. So I've gotten a few clients off of this and I've also gotten a few referrals from it. So that's what's been really great is also, you know, just meeting other people, but they, they find out that I'm a real estate agent. And then because they say I'm so helpful and so nice, they want to send business to me. So that's been great. Yeah. So the thing is about these groups is it's the modern way to farm a neighborhood. So instead of farming just one individual neighborhood or a couple, you're able to farm your entire community. And what makes that even better is that it's completely scalable. So you're spending way less time, less money, and you're reaching way more people. And it's very, very easy to do. Um, I want to show you as well, um, like, the posts that I do. So I have a couple of like just templates that I've made, and then we'll just go ahead and schedule these out for the week. Um, these are just ones about um, rental list, hiking, sandwich. Um, and then these are some other ones that we'll post that are much more like real estate related. So I try and intertwine all of the groups a little bit, but I also try and be very specific so that, that like my all things group is a lot more about the community and not so much real estate focus but I will post my homes for sale and rent group in that group and say like hey if you're looking make sure you join this group over here 
Um, so just, you know, scheduling these all out ahead for the weekend stuff, it literally will only take me like, you know, 10 minutes or so to schedule them all out. And then that's it. I'm done and I don't have to worry about it. Um, and then it's really just jumping in here and um, talking with people and responding to comments and just building those relationships like Jen says. So this group has a little over 2000. The other one has a little over 3000. Um, and Jen has almost a thousand, 500. I think, no, I got 500. Yeah. 500 right now. So yeah. Um, but another thing too, that I just started and, and I don't think we brought that up. I didn't talk about it, but, um, to help again, er area specific stuff is I started a YouTube channel as well. So I started Quantico living, which is kind of the name that I'm going by for real estate and all things Quantico. Um, and so again, the YouTube channel now leads me to, you know, put out not just real estate related stuff because there you can Google or, you know, YouTube, anything that's real estate related. But a lot of the people, again, that I am dealing with are military spouses, military families, and they want to know about the area. So not only do I do real estate things, it's all about like hiking in Northern Virginia. So I went on a couple hikes that are local, just again, to get people out of the house. I did neighborhood tours for a few of the most popular neighborhoods in our area. And again, that is something that I can share in these groups. When somebody just asked the other day, they're like, hey, who's gone to the cherry blossoms? you know, using the VRE. And I was like, oh, I got a YouTube video for that. So I'm able to use some of that content in these groups. And then, you know, again, you're just engaging with people and you are helping them find something to do in the local area. Because again, real estate, real estate, real estate, nobody wants to always hear that, you know? And for me, I don't want to pay for leads. I don't want to pay for things. So I am able just to build those relationships with people and get it organically. And I feel like that's the way that Jess is as well. And we've been able to get a lot of business in these Facebook groups because we answer questions. We engage with people. We are not just like, hey, I'm a real estate agent. Pick me. You know, we're, hey, where can I take my kid to, you know, the pediatrician? Where can I take my dog to the groomer? Um, you're really getting, I guess, down, not down and dirty, but you know, you're really just getting down to what people really want to know about these local areas and you are guiding them. So then when they do need a real estate agent, they're like, oh my gosh, Jess Cassie of Cherry Point Real Estate is amazing. Oh, Jen Carr with Quantico Living, she's always so nice and helpful. So it really leads us to get business that way, which I think is great. Absolutely. And I think, you know, one of the big things too that makes it so different is that, you know, we're always coming from a place of value. Like we're not asking anybody for anything. We're just providing them a bunch of information and resources and tips and tricks and fun stuff too. So I think that that's like a really big difference because people aren't like Jen said, you know, just seeing all kinds of real estate stuff. It's actually stuff that they really need. Um, but you do have the opportunity to, you know, run ads to your Facebook groups and you can do that, you know, from all the platforms. Um, but I think that that's one of the unique things too, is to be able to link these all together and use the resources like Jen was saying from her YouTube channel. Um, that's what we do as well. We use our um, real estate channel, our YouTube channel and put it in there, but also, you know, just, just providing the local information for the communities. Um, while we're still, you know, just talking about Facebook and stuff, I did want to talk about um, my third Facebook group. Um, and that is our MVP. That is our um, current clients. Um, and also not just our current clients, but the people that like always recommend us. So even if they've never bought or sold with us, but they go to bat for us, like on all social media platforms and will recommend us for everything. So those are the people that we want to give a little extra love back to. So inside, you know, our MVP group, we just kind of, um, instead of doing like pot buys and stuff, we do reverse pot buys. So we'll make like a bunch of stuff and then we'll put it in there and say like, hey, let us know if you you know want one, like pies for Thanksgiving. You know, everybody does that, but they go and deliver them. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm lazy about that. So make everybody come to me. <laughs> so that way they can all that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But like, but the more you sell, like it's, you know, it's all over the place. So everybody reserves, you know, apple or um, pumpkin, and then they come to the office and they pick it up. So for all the other little stuff, we make them and then they come and 
still pick them up or we when we do client events or giveaways it's all you know in our group and it's so easy because i mean you can literally you know just spend like 10 20 30 dollars do a starbucks card or even you know up level it and have you know your vendors help sponsor a giveaway item um you don't have to be giving away a yeti cooler every month i mean depending <laughs> yeah. depending well, where your business is <laughs> Yeah. And one of the things too, that I love to do, you know, again, for my past clients, I'm having a um, client appreciation event next month. And that is going to be, a, we have a, um, a minor league baseball team that is here in our area, the Fredericksburg nationals. And so again, I just, I reserved the first base sky porch and I invited all my past clients to come out. Um, I did it last year. It was a huge hit, you know, again, and while I was actually, when I sent out an invite, one of my clients that was PCSing to North Carolina actually reached out. They're like, oh, hey, Jen, by the way, we just got orders to North Carolina. Can you help us sell our, our townhouse? And I was like, absolutely. And, you know, and I hadn't really stayed in great contact with them. So I think by like, you know, reaching out to invite them um, to this event, it kind of brought myself back up as, you know, um, top of mind. So again, having these events in the community, doing something that, you know, even if you don't like baseball, it's free food. It's just, you're hanging out in the sky porch. It's kind of cool to come out and do stuff like that. So again, that helps you build your business and it helps you stay top of mind with your clients when you're doing events and doing stuff like that. So just make sure that, you know, when you are, you know, looking for business or you're at a slow time, make sure that you're planning stuff like that. It doesn't take a lot. I have somebody helping me sponsor these events. So it's great, you know. And you know what Jen said about, you know, just making it so much easier. That's the thing about all of these groups and um, it's just so scalable and it doesn't take that much time. And depending on, you know, what your niche is, you know, I always tell all of my agents, I'm like, if you like horseback riding, you know, and equestrian, you know, is your niche and stuff, start a Facebook group of, about local, you know, equestrians that want to get together, you know, you're building that relationship and you're creating your own niche to connect with people that are meant to be with you, you know, like they're automatically going to like you, you're going to like them and, and everything's going to be as smooth as possible because they chose you based on your personality, based on, you know, what you're sharing and what they see. So it makes a huge difference um, when you're able to pick who you work with. And this really does help that because people can really see who you are. Um, especially if you're sharing YouTube videos or reels or, you know, something like that. So they can really see your personality coming through. Um, but yeah, I mean, social media and stuff has always been our big part of how Jen and I have, have grown our business. It's definitely evolved over time because I would say, you know, way before we had, um, our own Facebook groups, we were actually joining all of the local ones, um, and building relationships with those people, just going in there. We'd spend so much time just going in there and commenting on everybody's, you know, stuff, like just providing them links, providing them resources. And not always just being so quick to be like, I am a realtor, you know, how can I help you sort of stuff, but really, really just trying to make friends with everybody. Yeah. And I think Jess and I have both, you know, I mean, if you go into any of the Facebook groups that we don't, or that we're not a part of, and somebody is looking for a realtor, guess who they're saying? They're like, Jess Cassidy with, you know, Cherry Point Real Estate, Jen Carr with Quantico Living. They are always recommending us because again, we are not always just pushing our real estate business. We are being very helpful and giving value to these people that are in our community. And so, and people see that they, they it really does come through to others that you are being genuine and you're not just in it to make money, even though we are in it to make money, <laughs> you know, when it really comes down to it, we are giving value to people by using these Facebook groups and putting out that information out there. It's definitely been uh, where I've gotten most of my business. And I know Jess gets a lot of her business from that as well. So I always say, and I, I actually, you know, I was just thinking today, I'm like, oh my gosh, you know what? I don't have any like specific real estate groups here in the Quantico area. I've only been here for two and a half years. There's a lot of other groups out there, but I was thinking today while we're on this, I'm like, I really need to start something that's specific for me for the Quantico area related to actually real estate. Even though there's other groups that are out there, people are always looking for, you know, um, stuff. So I'm like, okay, I can do one like Quantico living homes for sale and rent in, you know, Northern Virginia. Yeah. So perfect yeah and it doesn't good, matter how many yes. it doesn't matter how many there are because people will join all of them i mean this is definitely yes. not the um 
you know, the only group around. And there's ones that are very specific for each town and everything. I literally, I just went like all the counties. I was like, forget it. I'm not making 15 groups. They're all going to be in one. <laughs> um, and the thing is too, is, you know, we both deal with a lot of military and there's a million military Facebook groups, but you know what, if we made one more, everybody would join them. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and again, I think it's, you know, you can go to five different Facebook groups and see them. Well, if you're not um, putting out content consistently and you're not putting out stuff of value, then people are just going to like not see it and not care. You know, so if you're, you have to be consistent and you have to put out things of value that other people are going to want and not always using a lead magnet. Sometimes, hey, I have this buyer guide for free. Click here and you can get it, you know? Uh, but like, say maybe I want something specific, you know, using your VA loan, home benefits or whatever, click on this link and then I'm gonna, then I'm gonna con get their contact information that way. So sometimes, yeah. you know, giving out stuff for free and giving it out there. I have the, um, the Quantico VA 101 group and I made a brochure. So to be able to collect information, I made um, a landing page with KV Core, so they'd have to click on it to give me their information, and then I sent them out the um, Quantico VA 101 brochure. So now I have everybody's email addresses that wanted this list, and every time I put out an event, I send out you know an, an invite to the clients who have said, hey, I wanted this. So they may not be interested in real estate right now, but now I have all their information. I send out a monthly newsletter that is real estate related. So again, you are able to connect with people you maybe would not have been able to connect with um, otherwise. And that's the big thing too right there is, you know, going back to the coming from value, offering them the value. And, you know, no matter what it is, if it's, you know, a seller guide, a buyer guide, VA, you know, or conventional loans or anything like that, you're giving them something of value. And all they have to do is give you their name and their email. Um, one of the biggest yeah. things that I see with all of the agents and stuff that I teach is that they just give the information away and do not ask for something in return. So they're not grasping their email address. They're not um, getting, you know, their phone numbers, their names or anything like that. A lot of people will share directly from the MLS on their social media yes, and be like, I'm here, check out this yeah, I'm, I'm like, I see that I'm like, oh my gosh, you can use your KV core and you can get that information. You know, anytime that you share a home, like you have to use the, the benefits that we have as EXP agents like KV core and those links go directly to your, you know, your, your, um, CRM. Does, so everybody, it's like, does everybody know how to do that? Does, that? does everybody know how to do that? If you go, um, to KV core, if there's any homes that you want to share, or even if it's like all new construction or, you know, all homes in a specific town in KV Core, it makes you a very specific link that goes directly to you, your CRM, your website, all of that stuff. So when you share that, they can look yeah. at a couple of stuff for just a little bit of time, but then they have to put in all of their information right away. You, oh, here. Okay. Yeah. I'll show you. I'll show you really quick. Super easy. Yeah. It is. It's super and, easy. And, 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 why, guess, and why you're pulling and why you're pulling that up? There's a question that you guys probably can't see on the chat. It's on the Facebook no, say. live. Yeah. Uh, and how long did it take you to get to three thousand uh, users or uh, I mean uh, members? Um. So <laughs> it's kind of funny because a, one of my groups I stole from somebody else, <laughs> and I don't mean that like in a bad way. Um, it was, you know, somebody else was running it and guys like, don't be afraid of doing, I didn't steal it. I asked if I could have it, but like some people get really tired of running groups or they don't maintain them. So I just go and I'm like, Hey, um, do you want an admin for your group? And they were like, Oh my God. Yes. Like, I'm so tired of all the spam. I'm so tired of like having to approve people. And I'm like, Oh, I got you. I, mean, I run, you know, 15, 20 Facebook groups. What is another one? <laughs> um, so I took it over and. Um, that's definitely what happened with a few of, of my Facebook groups. I mean, I really do have like 20 Facebook groups. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you don't have any, you don't want to start from zero, you can totally go and ask people. I mean, sometimes people will sell them. Um, and I wouldn't pay, you know, a lot for it because you can really just build them. But if you're building it from the ground up, um, it depends if you're going to, you know, run some ads for it for local in the area or not but if you take that group and the link and start sharing it in other groups like when people are like oh you know like i'm moving to the area yeah. i don't know 
you know, what the best place is to live or anything. And you're like, oh, make sure you join this group. Like nobody knows, like it's your group and they think that you're just, yeah. you know, a regular old citizen sharing information <laughs> and you share that because it's not like just has to be a real estate page. It's like all things new and like, you know, it's, it's so non-threatening that nobody cares. So as long as you do that and aren't scared and just put that effort into it. Oh, here, let me go back. So if you go to listings, and these are just all EXP listings around here. So if I just click on any one like this, right over here, under who it says like the listing agent and stuff, this direct link takes anybody to that wants to look at this house to me. So this is where it would go. See, this is my um, office number. This is my office. Um, and all of my stuff doesn't say my name. It says my office on it because I just share it. Um, but so that's how you do individual ones. Um, but if you want to do like a bunch of ones. So, so where's the share button on that one? Because I had a, uh, something overlaid. So, right here. Okay. So yeah, it's just a direct mm -hmm. link straight to the landing mm -hmm. landing page. Um, now, my question is some CRMs can text it straight out. Can you text it? Uh, that link or do you got to email it um i think no i think you can text it send via text right here yeah all right well that's cool yeah you can do that yeah. um or you can share it all right online or generate a qr code too yeah yeah and that's what i love about it too like even like open houses and things like that you know it just makes it super easy to share it and it, and again you don't have to like i can go in and share any of my exp listings here in the area you know mm -hmm. and i can share it directly from my kv core even if i'm not the listing agent you know i can share that and get get business off of that link you know off of that listing um by posting it and then people will click on it because they're interested in that house and then they come directly to me so well, you know, even, even, you know, there's uh, being able to take listings that uh, I don't know what your uh, board or MLS rules are, but at least here in our area too, you can take other people's inventory as long as you're giving them credit for it in the brokerage, right at the yep. bottom, small print, and you can post it in these groups, right? And, um, it, and it's going back to your landing page because it's the IDX feed. And so, you know, if you're wanting to sit around and you got to get permission, uh, at least around here too, or some, yeah. and, um, you know, uh, post them in gr other people's groups, maybe you don't have a group started yet, but that's a good way to, you know, start to work up is mm -hmm. uh, post other people's listings and other people's groups to build up your listings in your group. I like it. And, and yeah, another I'll, really cool. I'll, I'll, go, ahead. go ahead, Jess. No, I was just going to say, if you create um, the links like this one's all new construction, Carteret County, this link will forever work for everything that's new construction. So if you create them and put them on just like a Google sheet or you use Bitly or something, this is always going to show whatever it is and you can just keep reusing it. And then you just created the thumb on like Canva or something like that, the imagery, you created that? Yeah, and I have, I have them all right here in um, Canva. So if anybody wants templates, I can share them. Cool. And then you're just uploading that with uh, the post on Facebook, right? Yep. We just go right into um, Facebook and schedule them right inside the group. Um, it makes everything super easy. You just go right in here and scheduled posts and we just schedule them out for the week. Like, you know, you can do, you know, like sandwich Saturdays. What's your favorite sandwich place on Saturdays? I mean, you can get just as creative you know, as you want to, um, and what you post there, um, in each of your groups and what, you know, your specialty or niche is going to be in those groups. Um, I suggest honestly having at least the two groups. I know one would be ideal for most people, but I really do think that having, you know, a homes for sale and rent group, and then having one that's just based on the community, because the people for the community might not be your buyers and your sellers right now, but you're building that long-term relationship. And then you can always share the groups back and forth too. Yeah, no, absolutely. Because like my Quantico VA 101 group, it is really just a community-based group. You know, I'm inviting military spouses are coming to it. And I'm not, um, even though I do talk about real estate and when we go to events and things like that, you know, I always say it's um, sponsored by, you know, Gen Car Real Estate or, or Quantico Living. Um, so that they know that, but 
having that specific buy sell page helps you get those people that are looking to buy and sell. You know, those, those are really our target audience, even though my niche is, you know, military spouses and military families. And I have that Quantico VA 101 group. It definitely kind of just intermixes. So someone's like, Hey, I'm looking for a house to buy, or, or Hey, I'm thinking about selling my house or we have PCS orders. You know, do you know anybody? Well, it's my group. So I'm like, Oh, Hey, by the way, <laughs> I'm a military spouse. I can help you out, you know? And they're like, Oh, that's great. So it definitely makes you have that connection, but yeah. I think having two different ones is definitely a benefit as well. And the cool thing is too, about it being your group, you control the narrative. You decide if you have other real estate agents in there. I mean, if I, I don't know every single real estate agent that's in all of the counties around. So I click on everybody's profile. If I don't, if I think that they might be in real estate, um, if it shows on there and you control that, you control what comes in there. If somebody else recommends another real estate agent, I might delete the comment. <laughs> um, um, I wanted to show you. What, yeah, what, what, I mean, type, what, type of, what type of classified group do you guys have in your area? So I like this, um, you know, is there a classified group like the newspaper classified, like posting, you know, um, just knickknack things, you know, in the classified. Yes, ad yard yeah. sale groups are what they're yeah, called yeah, in yeah. my area. Right. Yeah. So, so we have a bunch of those. Okay. So you got a bunch of them. And so even if you kind of even went down that route and not even rent by or sell, you know, um, you're probably going to, you know, pull real estate deals out of there. Well, at least the one in our, at least the one in our area got big quick. And so uh, I think being able to provide value and being able to have other people in there, other business owners or other, Mm -hmm. uh, we'll just say hyper local influencers that's grasped in the community to help you guys build that content because if you don't have other real estate agents in there but you're running a real estate group then the only advice comes from you and and so having maybe some other topic experts in there lenders maybe Mm -hmm. uh some all your vendor partners right right all the vendor partners so i like that Mm -hmm. um being in military town obviously we have uh mcconnell air force base here you know and so uh, what, what other communities have you guys thought of when you're talking, you know, about this to other people, like maybe a golfing community, like what other type of yep. like, um, community um you guys seen waterfront, people? waterfront, equestrian. I mean, it doesn't even have to be, you know, uh, niche down like that. It can literally be starting a group, like, uh, a book club group, uh, Facebook page. It's literally whatever you want. If you want to create another, you know, yard sale group and have specific rules, I mean, like I said, everybody, they don't care how many groups they're in. They're going to join all of them. And the way that Mm -hmm. yours will show up on their feed is the more engagement that you have in your group. So the more you post in your group, the more things that you ask questions, and it's not just talking at people, but asking them questions like me saying like, Hey, what's your favorite coffee shop? You know, or even, you know, going more like, what's your favorite coffee to get there? You know, and it's getting people yeah. to comment and say stuff or like, what's the, I wouldn't say, you know, like, what's the one that you hate the most or something, but, yeah. um, <laughs> but just getting people to talk. But I mean, the, the groups that you create could be completely endless. And um, you can even have, you know, other people, you can have a VA help you, you know, post in it if you want to. Um, it really like does not take a lot of time at all, but all of those other classified groups that you're talking about, you can share your group yeah. in there. Well, then we have one here in our area, it's called Stafford Talk. And so there's a ton of people that are already in this Stafford Talk group and they talk about everything and er- anything and everything under the sun, you know, um, the, the police chase that just went on, the car accident on I-95, mm-hmm. yeah. and, you know the power outage in your neighborhood. And so again, but it's nice to engage with it. And, you know, it's, uh, even though it's not my group, I'm on there a lot. And there's another EXP agent. His name's Teddy Spadell. He's, he's hilarious. He's the funniest guy. He posts funny things in there once a week. And, you know, he really engages with his, those people too. So again, it's just, you have to just be engaging in other groups that are in the area and posting stuff that's a value too. So even if it's not your group, you can still jump in and kind of be like an admin in that group and answer Mm -hmm. questions and help people out and guide them. And again, and jump in. I always say, I'm like, you want to be that person that's again, giving value because otherwise people are just going to be like, whatever, just another real estate agent. Cause how many real estate agents are in your area? A ton, <laughs> you know? So again, if they're like, oh, there's Jess Passy answering another question again, you know, being super helpful. Uh, and then they, then people will click on your profile to see, oh, Jess Cassie, real estate, you know? So again, it's, again, you want to um, build these groups and build these, you know, um, 
I guess, experiences with people to guide them to your, you know, business page. So I don't know. What do you think, Jess? Yeah. Um, I wanted to show how to, this is, I showed you how to grab like one listing and stuff, but I wanted to show you how to grab the links to do more than just one. Okay. Um, and that's, oh, yeah. that's making a squeeze page. Um, and it used to be like with KV core, like once you made a squeeze page, like if you didn't save the website, it was gone forever, but now they actually save yeah. them. So that's nice. <laughs> Um, so you can just niche this down to whatever you want. Like, I just like to say new construction because I think it's way easier to like, just share that. Um, but right here you can just type, you know, like whatever type of property, single family townhouses, anything like that. And we'll just do all of Craven. And as you type, it'll pull up maybe. Like maybe not today. <laughs> not when it wants you to. Let's see. It's probably because you're not. Right it's probably because it's being slow. Well, it was. There we go. City. So you can do like city subdivision, whatever you want to do. Um, and then there's all kinds of different options. So you can literally make these squeeze pages. You could do like every home in New Bern that has a pool. Like on a really hot day, that would be a really great one. Be like, who wants a pool? Um, so you can just post all the houses that have a pool. Um, but this one will just do construction because it's easiest, um, down here where it says options. These are all the different types of categories you can do like waterfront, um, and just like all this stuff on here, but I'm going to do newly built. And then whatever else you want to put in here, if you want to put like a source so that when people click on this link and then they sign up, they'll automatically, you know, have the source in here and you can put a hashtag like Facebook group. I always put everything, my Facebook group. See, that was already one in there. Okay. <laughs> Spaces. Yeah, that's a good um, idea in case you run ads to it and, uh, and yes. you know, posting it organically. You guys generated a lot of leads you guys closing hundreds of houses uh off organic leads and putting in effort but yeah. it's like is my effort paying off at craigslist or in my facebook exactly. group? Well, even though the leads are coming in free so being able to track the source of them is smart yeah because if you use a bunch of different stuff like if you have making it rain like all of those come in with mir you do realtor.com those ones are going to come in at realtor so just like adam said like when you're looking back over stuff you're going to be able to see where your return on investment really is um, another thing that I do is like the people that want to join the Facebook groups, like if they are not needing a realtor, but they just want to join my newsletter, I put like a little note, like newsletter, um, just so that I make sure that I include them on the newsletter every month, but yet they're not tagged as like buyer or seller. Um, okay. So once you put in everything that you want, um, you can put in different price points or anything. I'm just going to leave this. I mean, inventory is so low everywhere. It's probably best not to niche <laughs> down too much, but then you just hit the generate link. It's going to do a long one. And then this will have your actual like EXP website in it, but then the short one does not And I would like to use the short one, but then you're going to see. This has all the, all the homes for sale that are new construction in New Bern. And like I said, that link will always work. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't expire like the MLS links and stuff. So it's always going to update with all of the new construction homes. So you can just reuse them over and over and over. And that makes things really easy. Where, where do you live at over here? Do you guys live um, by this little river lake? It looks like. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of cool. Just, that's the Noosa River. Okay. It's the biggest river in the U.S. Do you know that? Is it really? Now you no do. Way. Fun fact. Yeah, yeah it's the white. It's Love the it. widest. Let's zoom out of it a little <laughs> nice. bit. I mean, it doesn't look that big, but I mean. Well, it's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's yeah. the Pamlico sound, but yeah, yeah, it is right here. At the beginning. Cool. That's very cool. It goes into the ocean. I like it. But yeah, we use so, tons so you, of landing pages and squeeze pages. Okay, so you're creating the spe <clears throat> the special landing pages 
um, <clears throat> for whatever reasons now, after you cr create that landing page, does it auto refresh or, um, uh, or do you have to generate a whole nother link, you know, with the listings, we'll just say for the next month or week or whatever. No, you can use the same link over and over. It just automatically updates. It'll always have all of the new construction homes that are active on the market. Okay, so you, so you only have to do that once. So you could you could essentially take that and embed that link somewhere else, like on a <clears throat> different maybe uh, mm -hmm. landing page with that you know uh, built on top of it to be a little more optimized and build them all around the little lake area. So you could essentially, <clears throat> this is what I talked about uh, at the mastermind, was not just being able to market your IDX feed, right? That's what most people mm -hmm. do, just take the, um, whatever your domain name is, and that's just your main landing page, right? But then they right. don't break it out in very optimized ways and subdivisions, towns, areas, and run 40, 50 different websites, because it could be very easy and it's like that website mm -hmm. looked, looked okay, but if you embedded it on, you know, just say a little nicer landing page with, you know, a blog or more information or just more co uh, content, right? Specific mm -hmm. to that, yeah. it, 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 it could look like a really good like website that updates like the feed and it could essentially be done quickly. And so how, how many landing pages do you guys think that you have out there? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I was gonna say, I, I don't I even mean, know. I yeah, I, I couldn't even tell you, but I will say using a lot of people like Linktree and things like that, and even Canva now you can create all the links and stuff, but with Linktree and stuff, you are able to have all of those landing pages and squeeze pages as all on one thing. So somebody can go there and be like, oh, here's all the new construction homes. Here's all the homes for rent. Um, here's information for buyers. How do I get you know my home value for sellers? So you can create that one page um, and it will have all of them on here. Let me see if I can pull one up. Yeah, and, you, that, wait, and, and that's and, that, and that's a good uh, idea too, for sure. When where do you host this on on top of your main uh, domain name website? Do you have like maybe a, a page created in there where they could see where you've done all the like like we'll just say uh, most common searches or or drilling down the certain keywords or I mean where would it set or how would they find it so um, I mean we can do there's a few things really honestly like so like even like with YouTube I'm using keywords everywhere so you can like see what people are searching for in your area so if they're searching for you know new construction homes in you know Quantico area or new construction homes in Stafford County you know those types of things we can like you know okay that's a lot of people are searching for that so I'm going to do a landing page or a squeeze page that's specific to that and then you just either post it you can do run an ad on Facebook that you know links right to that um, put it on your Facebook page put it in your uh, on your website all those things that are going to lead people to that and I think someone just asked a question um, yeah some, somebody keep... just asked yeah where you keep them all and I use bit.ly yeah for too. most of the point and because Bitly will keep all of them for like ever. Um, and yeah. then and you can track who's clicking on yeah. it and things like that as well. Yeah. But this is the link tree. Like I was talking about, like you can use this as, you know, like in your bios on your Facebook page at the top of your Facebook group. And this is like all different types of landing pages and links for them to click on. Um, and then Bitly. Yeah, I, I love Bitly because it keeps everything in and you can track, you can track everything with it. So you can see how many people are actually clicking on the link. So again, it's kind of like that keywords everywhere, you know, like, okay, what is getting the most traction? Is it new construction homes? Is it, you know, homes under 500,000? Is it homes in Stafford County? You know, things like that. You can really kind of see what people are looking at. And yeah, it's nice so, too, because so, you can change so, the... I, I got a I got a question. What's the and I had something covering up. So what's like link tree and the difference between Bentley and link link tree then? So it's like what? So link tree is like a landing page, like an all in one landing page. Uh, okay, so, so that's a lot the of people I was talking about. Yeah, so a lot yeah. of people use this in like Instagram because you can only have one website. So uh -huh. if you have this one website, then I can still send them everywhere because if you only have one website, you know, you can't do as much with it. So you use this one link and then you can send yeah. them anywhere. Okay. I like, I like that. What is the hosting on that cost? 
Nothing. It's free. It's free. Okay. I like it. So and, it that, and it has all the social media links on the bottom too. Okay. So that, this is kind of what I was talking about, but I was thinking it'd be hosted on your main website, but this is just a cheap way to get them. I mean, I, I, I like the name of it. It's like just a central hub for all your other links. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. all right. And, and it's so, super easy to change up. And Bentley, uh, Bentley is doing what in terms of how to track the links? So Bitly started as like a, a program to shorten all of your website addresses. So if you took, you know, these giant links or stuff that you didn't want everybody to see, like they didn't want to see just Cassidy.exprealty.com, this was the way to shrink them all down. That's how it started. Now it's grown a lot where you can actually track and see where people are clicking from. Like this express offers one, it shows like eight people clicked it. And you can see like more in depth of like where they come from, like all kinds of different stuff. And then you can also mm. generate QR codes and it's so a place to keep all of your links too. All right. So you're getting the analytics uh, from, from there that mm -hmm. Kate Core yeah. isn't giving you or uh, Linktree. I mean, it'd be cool if Linktree was letting you know who clicked on all this stuff. Cause I guess that could so be- So it does. Okay. Does, does yes. Linktree do that? Yeah, I wasn't sure. Okay. Yeah, see right here. Look, I just yeah. changed all these out. So they say zero, but they do have all this stuff. And there is paid platforms on yeah. Linktree that you can um, click on and they will um, you have just, more stuff. You just like using the other one because it gives you, it's that uh, Bitly is also free service, but it just uh, yeah. populates and shows you more for free. So I yes. use them for two different things because Bitly I use because see, it has all of my links on here. So right. I can just keep track of all of my links. Yeah. yeah. And this one, I can't like, once I delete it, it's gone gotcha. and then I won't have it. So if Thanks. I take away like my Sierra, my, my CMA like website, I delete that because I put something else new on there. Then I don't have that link that I had created before. Got you. So once you like just even hide the link or just try mm -hmm. to, uh, shut it down you can't put it back on is what you're saying and that went through this one you can it populates it for the second yeah. okay that makes yeah sense. i can hide it i can hide them on here and keep them and i could you know i don't know how many i would be able to keep on here but uh -huh. if i delete any then it would be gone forever um but with bitly i could just keep all of them in here and just always have a place to go back to and check them all yeah, so I I like this guys, and this is kind of what I was referencing last week. It's like with internet leads, um, you know, traffic being down like forty percent, and ad yeah. words and keyword uh, auctions are going up per click, and you know all that stuff. Like this is this is a way to control your cross. You guys just mentioned you generate a bunch of internet leads, but it close a lot of houses, but you guys don't pay for any uh pay-per-click advertising or anything because of just these simple little hacks so i love it um like uh like in, in terms of analytics and stuff like that it, it's like what some ahas that stick out to you that people should be looking for what's some of the leading or um lagging indicators with some of the metrics that you're looking at that um would be uh pros or cons in a positive or negative way to spend your time to generate free leads I mean, I think a lot of people, I mean, at least in my area, they like, they like new construction because right now um, in Northern Virginia, we are having a lot of, again, what we had last year, multiple offers, people are offering above appraised value. We have a lot of stuff coming in like that. So a lot of people are attracted to new construction because they don't have to basically battle other people to get the house. So I think right now for me in my area, putting out things that are geared towards the new construction neighborhoods um, is a benefit for me. I'm getting a lot more uh, people looking at stuff like that. Um, I think as far as like lead generating and everything like that, I feel like a lot of people think like, oh, if they create the content, then it's miraculously just going to have people like sign up and request information and stuff. But the problem is, is they're just sharing it like on their personal Facebook page or personal, you know, Instagram, which nobody sees it. Nobody knows that it even exists. So I think if you're starting, you know, from beginning and you have zero to very little budget, there's so much stuff that you can do that's free. And the return on that is already going to like 
succeed. Um, and that would be like sharing those links and the other, you know, classified Facebook groups that are in your local area, the yard sale groups, the, the buy sell trade groups, whatever they're called in your local area is sharing all of that stuff or your new Facebook group sharing those into there. And then once you start, you know, building them up, and getting some leads and stuff in there. And again, it's really important too that if you have those Facebook groups that you're setting those questions up in the beginning so that you, that's your first point of contact of getting information, lead generated. That's all free. And then you can start running ads to your Facebook group or running ads to like this down payment assistance for first time home buyers or running an ad of like, what's my home worth? You know, everybody wants to know what their home is worth. So those are some ways that you can spend money. and. If you are wanting to pay for ads and stuff, they can be very cheap. Um, the problem is, is that you just have to let them run long enough for the algorithm to mm -hmm. catch up. Because if you don't let them run long enough, it won't work. Yeah. Well, and then I think, uh, I think it was it Josh that asked a question. Yes. Um, are they private or are they? So my groups are not private. I have it, but you have to answer the questions to be allowed into the group because again, I don't want other real estate agents inside of my group that I that I'm running because again, that's kind of my lead generation. So I don't want somebody else snagging up one of my potential clients. So while it is it's private, it is it's public, not secret. Yes, there you go. It's it's a private, so you cannot get into the group unless you answer the questions. So um I, I like that. But Jess, are your um buy sell the ones that you have like for rent for buy, are those private as well? Yes, they're all private. You cannot see anything in the group unless you are in the group, but you can okay. find that. So if your group is okay. secret, then nobody can find that. Um, they would have to be, you know, invited. They're, you know, top secret. They're not findable in the search engines. But as long as they're private, they will be found. So you you definitely want them to be private because you don't want everybody to be able to see everything in there, especially if you know, you are posting real estate things and stuff because other realtors are really nosy and they'll try to steal your ideas. <laughs> try to steal all the good stuff, yes. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, does anybody have any other questions? I'm happy to share the templates and stuff that I have created for um, all of my agents for the Facebook groups and stuff if anybody wants them. Yeah, um, that'd be amazing if you could send the maybe templates into uh, Sarah or whatever, and then we can also get them out with your recording or whatever. Um, but uh, I, I don't know how long, how how many templates you got, but that'd be awesome. So, uh, you know, this this is this was kind of um, you know cool to see the amount of leads that you guys are generating. It's what I uh, asked you. Uh, if you could go to your lead central pool or your main pool, like I'd love to see how many leads you have in there um, and you're nurturing. Um, I have a lot. Yeah, I know, but I, I, know, I, I know, but I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to put a dollar figure to it on a very yeah. basic level. On like, we'll just say average lead cost. <laughs> and so, yeah, I mean, I have over 3000 in here. Okay. Yeah. So let's, let's just, say. Throw, you know, mm -hmm the average Google, Yahoo, Bing, and- 3,047. I mean, these are, let's just say $17. And obviously I'm paying a lot more than that for a lot of different leads coming off. <laughs> there, but um, three, what, 3,000 what? 47. Okay. Just go with 3,000. So just off of the work that you've been putting, you know, into this, it's like you have, and it's, this is a very conservative number. I mean, $17 a lead, that's over $50,000, like just off raw lead gen that you'd be paying Google or Yahoo or Facebook or whatever. And you were able to keep that money in your pocket. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but there's going to, there's got to be an exchange of uh, a little, some sweat equity, right. And being able to put all this stuff together. So how many hours a day do you feel like you work on this? And then uh, do, since you're generating it and there's a little bit of branding and marketing that goes along with the sales piece of it, uh, mm -hmm. are you, you know, what's your prospecting hours look like maybe? And 
you know, what's the quality of leads. And I talk about the difference between all the way from advertising to just a, a Google lead, like in the, the amount uh, uh, and the quality is way different. And so what, what's that look like in terms of uh, when you're getting them on the phone, do they already know you, you, you know, are you spending two hours a day doing this one hour a day? What's this look like? Jen, you want to go first? Sure. Um, so for me, really, I mean, again, I <laughs> thanks, Jess. No, <laughs> no, for me, um, you know, I mean, I, I don't it's really hard for me to put like a, a time frame on what I do. Yes, I do lead generate every single day. I'm on the computer. I am going into these. Okay, Facebook what's, pages. What, what, I'm okay Jen, Jen, let's spread. Let's separate the two out. One of them is a marketing. Yes. One of them is a marketing task and duty that you would be normally paying Google. Right. The other one is yeah. then playing the leads that come in. And so like, let's just start with the marketing piece first. I know you guys prospect how many hours, or yeah. maybe is it just once or twice a week that you're focused on these links and getting these links out and landing pages and pushing this into the community, or are you just dealing yeah. with it organically when you got some free time at night or whatever? And it's like, or is it, is it on your calendar, like prospecting? Yes, it is on my calendar because, you know, they always, if it's not on your calendar, you're not going to do it. Um, and what, what's great about it, though, and Jess will talk about this, too. Once you make those links, you have them. They are there forever. Like, again, if new construction in Craven County, it's done. So it really does take a very little bit amount of time to put that out there once a month. And if you schedule those posts, I can set down one day a month, okay, schedule all these posts, you know, into my groups, into my thing. And I already have the links already done because I've done them prior. So again, probably setting all this stuff up, you know, you're going to spend mm -hmm. maybe a whole day, maybe eight hours, maybe 10 hours getting all this stuff prepped and ready to go. And then you just set down one day and you schedule it all out for the whole month. So spend one day, schedule it for the month, and then you're done. And those links are going to be there. So next month, it just takes copying a link and putting it into wherever you want it to go. I so like really it. that marketing part, yeah, it's, it's so easy. Once you get it all saved and you get it all set up, it kind of just a click and play, click and play, you know, um, and it makes it super easy. Jess is really good at this and she's really helped me out a ton in my real estate business because she has processes in place to say, all right, this is what you do. This is how you set kind of how she showed us. Um, I didn't use KD core for the longest time. because I'm like, I don't know how to do this. You know, we have tons of classes, tons of things. And Jess was like, dude, save it, do it like this. And you save the link in Bitly. And I'm like, oh, that's so easy. So it's really made that process a lot less. So instead of paying somebody to do it, I already have them all saved in Bitly. I just click it, you know, copy and I paste it wherever I need it to go. So really that time spent is like one day a month setting everything up for the rest of the month. So, but you just have to, you have to put it on your calendar and you have to do it. And then once you have that out there and it's scheduled, all you have to do is go in and make sure that you are responding to people's comments. You are checking your, you know, your DMs, making sure that you're answering questions that people, you know, that are, that are out there. I mean, even with like YouTube, you know, I got a call the other day and they're like, Hey, I found you off of YouTube. I was like, what you did, what you did, what? <laughs> And that was really cool because it was like, again, all that content that you are putting out there, eventually people are going to, you know, find it and use it and call you and contact you. So you are not having to prospect and people already know you. They see you on your reels. They see you on Facebook. You know, when we do lives or we do videos. They see you on YouTube. So they are like so reaching out to you yeah. and saying, hey, I want to do business with you. Right. So it helps with the mind share piece of that and the indoctrination. Yeah of brand building and but you still have yeah. to prospect for sure but yeah, you, you create it. but you create an inbound um lead every now and then versus mm -hmm. not having any of that stuff right or maybe it's a 70 30 yeah. game where you're reaching out prospecting you know and we'll just say seven of your clients was from following up and built brand building and all that but three were layups like youtube or videos or reels or whatever so do you, yeah. you guys say that's a fair uh ratio 70 30 seven out of ten. Oh yeah definitely and i mean i think the key is is like just having those systems in place so even if you're not going to you know, nurture those leads like right away or something, but having them, they automatically go into KV core and having your campaign set up, let your system do the work for you and yeah. nurture your leads. So we start, we have all of the systems. I have a video of how to set up your Facebook groups right from the beginning. And then just like Jen said, we just schedule what, everything out. What, we literally don't do what, a lot. 
what 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 not the group that you got you run this in don't you run a real estate group too where you have real estate agents in there like yes. like you do have one of those groups and where you maybe share some of this stuff a little more in depth i know we're at the maybe at the top of the hour here and i want to be respectful yeah. of everybody's time but um you know what what what's that group how can these people get a hold of you guys or uh follow you guys um you know sec second of all jen i wanted you to uh also answer part two of that question how many hours a, pro a day do you prospect though you know so it's like you do prospect right and so it's oh, like yeah two hours or what? i would say i would say like, you know i would say like two hours a day i would say i would prospect you know because again you're and that's just you know again facebook youtube right. all those things just right. kind of wrapped into one um by right. and, and again calling people too you have to you have to follow up with people if you don't Look, follow up with them yeah. then they're just going to go find somebody else you have to stay top of mind you have to follow up you have to answer questions if you say you're going to give somebody something you have to give it to them um and do it quickly like again if you if you put out a, a lead page or a landing page and you say you're going to give them something have it go directly to their email so that they're getting it right away otherwise they're just going to be like oh she said she was going to do that and she didn't and then you just lost that person so um yeah, like, at least two hours a day for prospecting. So I, I like that and it doesn't matter i'm paying for 90 dollars leads through the realty.com not the realtor stuff but i yeah. we have had this deal done before exp got the deal done i bought out mm -hmm. this whole area i spent over 10 grand a month and it's so true. Yeah. It's like these leads, even though they're the middle of the funnel, not just straight mm -hmm. top of the funnel. Um, it's like if we're not calling them and being proactive with them, it, it doesn't matter. They're not being converted. Yeah. So it don't matter if they're hundred dollar leads yeah. or if they're free leads. All it is is another human being on the other side clicking links and moving into like a <laughs> stage or gathering information about moving into a military town or yeah. move it, you know, downsizing or moving out of it or whatever. And so we have to make those calls. We still have to make those connections. Yeah. We still have to understand time for motivation and then what needs to happen behind that. And then Jen said it best. It's like, do what you say you're going to do and then execute on it. That's what, you know, builds integrity, but more importantly, what builds trust is the consistency of doing what you say you're going to do. And over time through the cash mm -hmm. conversion cycle, you guys are gaining a lot of business. You guys are doing a wonderful uh, job at this stuff. So congratulations to you guys. Um, and so maybe still plug the group, Jess, and I'll let you have any final words. Susan, your question here at the end, the recording will come out and she showed you how to set up the new construction uh, a landing page or any landing page and it's under the listings and and uh, how to uh, create a, even a, a, a thumbnail or imagery for it and so it will be in the re replay but Jess I'm gonna let you take us home okay cool um yep so um I will share all the stuff with Adam and Sarah later um I do have additional videos on setting up the Facebook group and we'll share all of the templates um, we do have a Facebook group of just real estate agents where we do lots of trainings like this, and it's called How to Be a Modern Real Estate Agent, and you can find that on Facebook, and you can connect with Jen and I on Facebook and Instagram with just our names, so um, thank you so much for everybody having us. Yes, thank you, Adam. Yep, you guys did great. Thank you, guys. All right, have a good one.